Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I have a quick fun tag video for you today. Now, this video is kind of doing a little bit of reading wrap up for 2022. So I admit that it would have been a lot better if I had been able to do it at the very start of this year. However, I only just discovered this tag and the tag creator. And I wanted to go ahead and do it because I still feel like we are very much in wrap up mode here for the 2022 reading year. I still actually have one more wrap up related video coming out. And so I figured why not? The tag that I am referring to is the January book tag. Emphasis on Jan because this was created by the lovely Jan Egaton. I will be sure to leave her tag video down below as this is an original tag created by her. Like I said, I only just recently discovered Jan's channel. I'm a patron of Sid Bookworm and during one of their live sprints, she actually had Jan on and that's how I discovered her channel. And I was going through some of her videos and I found this tag and it was like, oh, this would have been perfect to do at the beginning of the year. I'm still considering this the beginning of the year because as I'm filming, it is only January 21st. So we are going to roll with it and going forward, I will try to do this within like the first week of the next year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Question number one is what was the first and last book that you read in 2020? 2022. So the very first book that I read in 2022 was The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. I believe this was a historical fiction. I don't remember too much of the details. I do know that it follows this family of seven sisters and all of these seven sisters were adopted by their father. So this father is a single man. He went out and he adopted all of these sisters from different places, different regions. None of them ever really knew what their father did or why he adopted them all, but he all had some like very specific reason and purpose for adopting these daughters. And so every single book in this series is following the story of one daughter because after he passes away, he basically leaves them information on how they can go about uncovering their past and their heritage. And so in the very first book, I believe you're following the oldest daughter and then it goes from there. I decided not to continue in the series because I didn't enjoy it enough. I did enjoy it while I was reading it, but I had a lot of technical issues with it. I do remember that, but that was the book that I decided to start 2022 with. And I decided to end 2022 with The Rewind by Alison Winscott. So this is the story of two exes, Frankie and Ezra, who broke up on graduation day in college 10 years prior to the start of the story and it was really a contentious breakup. They never wanted to see or speak to each other again but they are basically being forced to see each other because they are all reuniting on their former college campus for the wedding of two mutual friends. They plan to avoid each other entirely but one day they wake up in their old college dorm. They are in bed together and they are both wearing rings. They have no memory of what happened and they are trying to piece together the events of the prior night. So this was definitely a fun, cute, charming read. I decided to save this for the end of the year because it is literally set on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and so I thought it would be the perfect end to 2020. 2022 and like I said it was an enjoyable reading experience overall but like nothing super substantial. I had a lot of gripes about it. You have to kind of suspend your disbelief going through here because how could two people possibly have memory loss of the night before? It didn't really seem very plausible to me and then the way they kind of just jump back into a relationship after 10 years of mutual hatred with no real build up to that. I didn't really feel the chemistry between them. It didn't really work very well for me so I only gave this a three stars but I'm glad that I did read it because it was my intention to read this at the end of the year so I'm not mad about it but it wasn't anything fantastic. Question number two is what is your first read of this year? And I actually just posted my recent reads video where I talked about the first five books that I read in 2023. And my very first read was The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. Y'all know that I have complicated feelings about that because I was expecting it to be a stronger reading experience than it was. I was expecting to leave that book on away like easy four, easy five stars. I did rate it a four stars, but it was a very complicated four stars. I was just expecting it to be a lot better considering my love of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. But the execution of it left a little bit be desired. It follows our main character Shay who ends up investigating the death of her former college best friend Laurel alongside Jamie who is a podcast host and a former childhood friend of Shay. They believe that there is much more to Laurel's death than the suicide that everybody's claiming it to be and it kind of leads them into this world of a dark patriarchal sex cult. And like I said on the outset it sounds absolutely fantastic and I loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife so much that I just figured that I was going to love this and booktubers that I trust love this so much but I wasn't emotionally connected to it like I thought so it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be and I felt a lot of pressure to love the story. Felt a lot of pressure to start meeting challenges because of the start of the year so that could have affected my reading experience but overall I did settle on a four stars. It was probably closer to a 3.5. I'm not sure but we're gonna go ahead and stick with the four stars. Question number three is share three of your reading goals this year. I actually did create a whole video on my reading goals for 2023 but if I had to choose my main goals I would say number one would be definitely to hit the Goodreads challenge which I set at 100 books for myself. We're gonna see if I can do it and bypass it. If I bypass it again this will be the third 
year in a row that I do that. And so I think I might up it for 2024, but for right now, 100 is a solid number. Again, I made a whole separate video talking about doing this and why I wanted to do it. But my intention is to read almost entirely backlist. So 2022 and before books and only read 2023 books if they are being sent to me in book boxes, because I do want to battle the backlist. And I also do want to lower my physical and my virtual TBR. I want to make sure that my TBR is fresh and being refreshed as often as possible. And I don't feel like I have the capacity to do that if my TBR is very large. I feel like if my physical TBR is large, they're just going to sit on my shelves for years and I'm eventually going to lose interest in a lot of them. Same thing with the virtual TBR. And so my focus is really on those backlist titles so I can kind of clear out a lot of that TBR and then focus on adding more fresh things that I'm excited about going forward. So I feel like that's two goals in one, you know, battling the backlist and clearing my physical TBR. So I would say those are my top three, but because I kind of wove those two together, I'm going to say that my third one is to complete or get near completion to all of the reading challenges that I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of reading challenges and it's surprisingly difficult to get books to double up. So like if I'm doing a book that satisfies a prompt on this reading challenge, it wouldn't necessarily satisfy a different prompt on another reading challenge. So I'm having to do some planning and I'm having to try to figure out how I can do it because there's no way I can possibly read individual books to satisfy all of these prompts. So there's definitely been some planning involved with that. So we're going to see what I can do. All that to say, I would like to finish or come close to finishing as many of the reading challenges as possible. And so that would be a third goal. Question number four is share three of your anticipated titles for 2023. Now I have mentioned this before, but I don't necessarily anticipate new releases because I don't read them when they come out. It's not a priority for me to do that, but there are definitely some great books or what I assume are going to be great books coming out in 2023 that I am excited about. I am absolutely excited about Happy Place by Emily Henry. I have grown to very much love Emily Henry and the romance novels that she puts out. I think the banter that she creates between her characters is phenomenal. She does a fantastic job of character driven romantic relationships and I just love her writing style. So I'm super excited to get to this one at some point. I of course will also be very excited to read the newest book from Riley Sager called The Only One Left. I absolutely loved the synopsis of this one when I read it and I'm hoping this is going to be my next favorite by Riley Sager since the last couple that I read were not his best and I had a lot of issues with them. But for some reason I will always read whatever Riley Sager puts out. There's just something about the man and the story that he creates because even if I don't love the story and I don't love the outcome, I love the journey that I take to get there. So definitely excited to read his novel. And if I have to pick another one, I'm excited to read the newest Lisa Jewell called None of This Is True. I discovered Lisa Jewell last year and she's quickly becoming one of my favorite thriller suspense novels. I really enjoyed the three books that I read by her last year and I'm definitely excited to continue with her as an author in the future. Another one I also wanted to mention was The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Taylor Adams wrote No Exit, which is one of my favorite wintry isolationist thrillers of all time. Hairpin Bridge wasn't nearly as good in my opinion, but it was still really interesting. It was a different type of story. It still had isolationist vibes, only very different. And I enjoyed my reading experience. It was fast paced. It kept the pages turning and I absolutely want to read this new release. I want to see what more he can do because I'm intrigued by him as an author. So that is definitely an anticipated release for me in 2023. Question number six, are there new releases this year you've heard of that you've no desire to read? And yes, basically almost all the other ones. <laughs> There are a ton of books coming out in 2023 that I have no interest in reading. I don't really want to go through all of them here, but like the new Cassandra Clare fantasy novel that is coming out that is not set in her like mortal instruments realm is coming out that I have no interest in reading. The prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon I won't be reading because I haven't actually read The Priory of the Orange Tree and I have no interest in doing so. A new book by Roshani Chokshi is coming out. Never read her, don't have any interest to. Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I will not be reading that. I don't think R.F. Kuang is the author for me. I didn't really love The Poppy War. I haven't really loved the synopsis of some of the other books that I've seen come out with her. I know that she is very beloved and a very popular author here in the online bookish community, but I just really don't have any interest. So that's probably going to be the, the most unpopular opinion about the new releases that I don't plan on reading in 2023. But there are quite a lot that I have no interest in and won't be reading. Question number seven, what are some reading habits that you want to change this year, if any? So there are two that I can think of off the top of my head. The first one is to be okay with a book taking longer than expected. So I primarily read books via audio. I would say easily like 97 or 98 percent of the books that I consume are on audio just because I don't have the time or the concentration to sit down and read books physically. The only books I tend to do that with are chunky fantasies that I want to like annotate and highlight and reference maps and things like that. And I do listen to all of my audiobooks on two times speed because if I'm listening to them on any less it sounds like they're talking in slow motion. So I'm listening to them very fast and because of that I tend to get through them very fast but that is only if I'm in a situation where I can listen. I definitely listen to and from work every single day and if I am doing 
chores and stuff. But if I'm not doing chores or if I'm not driving somewhere, there's very little opportunity for me to actually listen because I need to be doing something while I'm listening. I can't just like sit and listen. You know, I have to be doing something with my eyeballs, with my hands in order to listen. So if I'm in a situation where that's not the case, nothing is going to be listened to just like if I'm not sitting down and physically reading, nothing is going to be read. And so I feel like this month I've been kind of getting through books a little bit slower than I normally would just because I'm finding myself with less opportunities to listen for one reason or another. And I want to be okay with that. I want to be okay with a book that might normally take two to three days to finish, actually taking four to five days to finish instead. I don't want to necessarily rush through the books just to reach numbers. I want to be able to read and absorb the books because I already suffer from terrible bookish amnesia. Like I could read a book that I really, really enjoyed. And two weeks later, I won't remember hardly anything about it except the overall plot and like how it made me feel. And it's just heightened when I'm rushing through the books. So I want to be okay with taking my time with them and really absorbing them and allowing myself to be in the story. No, of course that's different if I'm really hating the story and I just want to get it done. But overall, I want to be okay with slowing down a little bit. And that's the same for those books that I am reading physically. Like if it takes me a couple months to get through them, I want to be okay with that. Although that does interfere with my reading experience just because reading them in small chunks like that makes me lose the momentum. So in that way, I can't really be okay with it. Like I want to be able to continuously read and that actually kind of brings me to the next reading habit. If I have a book that I'm reading physically, I want to be able to sit down and read every single day, even if it's just a chapter, regardless of what's going on. If I'm very stressed or overwhelmed, that would be the very first thing that goes. And I want to make it a point to not do that, not to let the stress win. I want to sit down and read a chapter of a book no matter what, because I want to maintain that momentum with reading physically. So being okay with books taking longer than I would normally expect them to, and actually making the time to sit down and read physically every day. If I do have a physical book that is going on, that is my goal. And I would also like to have a physical book going on at all points. So if I can just keep that going, no matter my mood, no matter my stress level, and just make myself sit down and read, I would be very happy with that. Question number eight, are there any adaptations you are excited about? And heck yes, all of the Taylor Jenkins Reid adaptations. Now, the only one that I know for sure, for sure is being released in 2023 is Daisy Jones and the Six, which I am so hyped and nervous for at the same time. This one is being produced by Reese Witherspoon's production company. And I know that she's going to do this justice because she loved the book herself so much, but I'm still so nervous, but the trailer looks amazing. It's coming out in March, I believe right around my birthday. So I'm hyped to watch that. They're also making an adaptation of One True Loves and I believe Philippa Sue is going to be in it. And if you don't know, Philippa Sue was the original Eliza Hamilton in the Hamilton Broadway musical. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see her in this movie. I think it's going to be phenomenal. I love this one so much. Like I said, I I don't know if that's actually going to be released in 2023, but if it is, I will be watching. There are quite a few other things that I know are supposed to be coming out, but I don't necessarily know when, like The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which is one of my favorite World War II historical fictions of all time. I think it's supposed to be coming out in 2023, but not entirely sure. Absolutely will be watching that. Oh, and I also want to watch the adaptation of Lessons in Chemistry. I believe that's coming out on Apple TV as a limited series, and I totally, totally want to see the adaptation for that because I really enjoyed the book. So they are adapting some fantastic books, and I am down for that, assuming they do an amazing job. Question number nine is my favorite bookish memory from 2022. And I would have to say that was definitely meeting Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I have been a follower of Sarah for many years, probably since 2017 or 2018. And I was in the Washington DC area in September on a vacation and she lives in Virginia. And so we decided to meet in Old Town Alexandria. We had lunch, we went book shopping. It was a blast. It was so much fun to get to meet a booktuber that I love and I consider a friend and we've done some buddy reads and stuff. And it was just a really, really good time. I would love to meet some other booktubers in the future. I just don't think I live near anybody. I'm down here in Mississippi. I don't think anybody else lives near me. And unless I'm traveling and going somewhere, I'm probably not going to meet anybody else anytime soon. But that was just so much fun. It was such a lovely, lovely experience. So that would definitely be my favorite bookish experience. And I wasn't filming booktube videos at the time. I was still very much away from booktube. So I didn't even like have an opportunity to film anything with her or anything, but it was still a great time. And then the final question is question number 10. And that is carryovers from last year that I still plan on finishing. And that is none. I typically don't carry over books from one year to another. I try to be finished with all of the books that I'm in the middle of by the end of the year. And chances are, if I have DNF'd a book, I'm not going back to it. So the answer is zero. I have no carryovers from last year that I still plan on finishing in 2023. All right, y'all, that was the January book tag. I hope that you enjoyed. That was a lot more fun and in-depth than I was expecting it to be. And I look forward to doing this in the coming years, closer to the start of the year. I'm not gonna tag anybody because I don't know who has or has not done this. And if most people would feel like it's possibly a little bit too late to already 
already do it, but I'm a rebel. I did the mid-year book freakout tag in like September of last year, y'all. Okay, so I am late to the game. I'm a late bloomer. It's fine. That's always been the case, but I hope that you enjoyed. If you do want to go ahead and do this tag, please feel free. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and I have a video to film, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.